Hello and welcome to lesson 6 in our Python series of video tutorials. We've looked recently at allowing the user to input text and then we've been manipulating that text, storing it in uh, variables and then combining those variables. What we haven't looked at though is allowing the user to input a different sort of data. Instead of inputting letters and strings, inserting numbers. So that's what we're going to have a go at now. Now the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to deliberately make a mistake and show you why. So let's let's write as we would be if we were saying um, that we're going to allow the user to input a number. So let's say a equals input and then we'll write a prompt here. Please enter first number. So that'll put up the print, um, put up the prompt rather there, please enter first number uh, as an input. So it'll prompt the user to input something. The program will halt and wait until the user has inputted something. And then the computer will take whatever they've inputted and put it in the variable that we've called A here. Well, once we've done that, we're going to have a second uh, number to play with. So B equals input. And there's our prompt. We're going to say, please enter the second number. So we're going to have two numbers inputted by the, computer, by the user. One of those numbers is in the variable A and one is in the variable B. What we want now is to be able to have a third variable, which is the, the total of A and B multiplied together. So C equals a times B. Now you'll notice um, that we've used this little asterisk in computing. We use the asterisk rather than say the letter X because of course the letter X is a letter not a symbol. Uh, the X could in fact be the name of a variable so we couldn't have X times X. Uh, it just wouldn't work. So we've got the asterisk there as the uh, multiplication symbol. So C equals whatever we've put in A multiplied by whatever we've put in B. And then what we want to do is to print C. So we're going to print the total of A and B multiplied. So if I was to enter um, a 3 and then I was to enter a 4, then we should see 12 outputted as 3 times 4. Now this program is going to generate an error. And we'll have a look at why. So if I run the program, so shift F10 in this, there we are, please enter first number. So let's enter three. There we are, no problem at all with that. Please enter the second number. Let's go for four. And now we get our traceback error. Now with Python, with any programming language, don't be afraid of errors. Errors aren't the computer telling you off saying you're not good enough you can't do this what do you think you're trying to do programming me um, errors are there or error messages at least are there to help you to tell you okay i don't get this bit what, what do you mean by that bit so let's have a read through um, it says here that, that this is the line that's got the problem we can see it's line three so we can see in our code which line we're on. It's this line here, C equals A times B, which is the error, seems perfectly okay. Type error. Now that's not you typing on the computer, that means the type of data, the type of information that the computer is working with. It can't multiply a sequence by non-int of type str. Okay, what does that mean? Basically it means that it can't multiply numbers which Aren't, or, sorry, can't multiply data, which aren't numbers, non-int, non-integers, they're not numbers. These are str, in other words, strings, these are text. It's like saying multiply oranges by bananas. It doesn't make any sense. You can't multiply one string by another string. So what we have to do with our uh, programming code up here is at some point to tell the computer, okay, whatever we put into A, treat that as a number. Whatever we put into B, again, treat that as a number. Um, and then if we have A and B as numbers, then C is naturally going to be a number because it is one number times another number. 
Uh, the problem with this input command that we've used here is that it will generally assume that what the user is inputting is text. So even though I enter a digit, a number, the computer is not recognizing that as a number, it's just treating that as text. Think of it a little like um, giving someone your mobile phone number and then giving them your home number and wondering why they're not multiplying the two together. Well, yes, all right, they're numbers, but you're not actually doing any maths with them. It's just like an address or a name. It's a way of identifying something, not actually a number that you're going to be doing maths with. And in the same way with Python, if you don't tell it it's a number, it will treat it just as text or just some random data it doesn't really need to worry about. So how do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is take the whole of this section of this first line here, A equals something, and we're going to say, OK, A equals an integer format of whatever the user enters. So we put the whole lot of that in brackets, first of all, and then before those brackets, we write INT. So A equals an integer of this input. Uh, so let me write that from scratch here for B. So B equals an integer of whatever the user inputs after they've been prompted to enter a second number. OK, so there we are. Now C equals A times B. That should be fine. Print C. No problem at all with that line. So let's shift F10 and run our program. So please enter the first number. We'll enter three again. Please enter the second number. We'll enter four. And then we've got the total of 12, which is correct. Let's try that again with some bigger numbers. So please enter the first number. Let's have 378. And the second number, 412. And the answer, 155,736. But then you knew that. Um, this program then demonstrates at a very simple level how we can turn inputted data into a number or numerical format that the user can then, uh, that the computer rather can then do some calculation on. So that's a very simple format, but there's a problem. Perhaps you can spot what the problem is. If not, let me run the program and demonstrate it. Please enter the first number, 15. Please enter the second number, banana. What's going to happen? We get a traceback error. And if we look at the error, we can see that it's all about this line here, b equals an integer of whatever I'm inputting. There's a value error. Invalid literal for integer with base 10, banana. In other words, it cannot convert this text here into an integer. It's not valid. That is not a valid number. Not in base 10, which is the way we count using the digits 0 to 9. So um, what we'll need to do, and we'll look at this in the next uh, tutorial, is how we can cope with this kind of error message. How we can put in some clever little system that checks whether what the user is inputting is in fact valid, whether it is in fact an integer. And if it's not, we're going to say, oh, not good enough, try again, until the user does enter a correct value for A. So try this one. Uh, what you can try perhaps is doing a few different calculations. You could have C equals A times B. You could have C equals A plus B. Um, so doing some different calculations. So if we enter 3 and then we enter 4, we'll get 7. So you can try doing a, a few different calculations um, and even perhaps seeing if you can work out in the print section how to actually print the entire response. So if I enter 3 and then 4, it would say something like 3 plus 4 is 7. So how would you get that to print out? See if you can try that as a little exercise before the next uh, tutorial. Um, if you found this useful, please do give it a uh, thumbs up 
and if you haven't already subscribed please do so so that you can keep up with these tutorials as they're rolled out. If you have any questions or any problems leave them in the comments section below and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.